I'm looking at his number. He's not in the Tokyo area. Back in my own room. I look over the scrap of paper Chizuru handed me, cell phone in hand. Whatever the contents of the envelope may be, it's clear that Sachi's uncle has something he wants to tell me. Eh, no reason to think too hard. I'll, I'll know once we talk. After one final attempt at per persuading myself, I enter the number from Chizuru's not in my private cell phone. It's ringing. Yes, when the call connects, I hear the voice of a seemingly mild-mannered middle-aged man on the other end of the line. Am I speaking with Komini Akihiro-san? Oh, you're good. Yes, I apologize for introducing myself. <laughs> I guess so. I appreciate your understanding. No, I thought it might be best to hear what you have to say first. Sure thing. As instructed, I rip open the thick envelope Principal Tachibana handed me on the rooftop. Inside, I find a single metal key. Weathered with age. A key? This would seem to be... Yes, I did. Oh. The workshop? Well, I understand what you're saying, sir, but why would you give this to me? Yeah, I'd appreciate some clarification, yes. この前届いた手紙を見て驚いたんだよ。シャックあ。私が幸と最後に話したのは、あの子が行方不明になった事件があった後のことで。その時に時間が取れるようだったら夏休みに帰ってくるといいという話をして別れたんだ。だが、お
サチの母親のポケットの中から見つかったものだ。Did you have the key to the house as well? いや。二人のポケットから見つかったのは、工場の鍵だけだった。Yeah, that is. Typically, people keep the most frequently used keys together on a single ring. And since our parents had left the house, presumably planning to bring their daughter back home, grabbing the key to the workshop doesn't really make any sense. What does your Jiko go to Ishuka Mini? Ototo no yo, Tasnete Tandaga. Some toki, Ototo ka kona koto it tandayo. Mosuke, Nisan will be Christa Serio na Hoko Garum da Tene. Your jaw drop. Are you saying you haven't entered the workshop yourself since the accident? Oh. Why? Yeah, Yes, from what she's told me, the family business was featured on television. Things became very busy and they stopped paying much attention to her. It's quite tragic, really. Hmm. Is that so? Would you mind explaining, please? Yeah, that's what she said. Yeah, that's what she said. あの子のために納期を遅らせたり、仕事をキャンセルしたりするのはしょっちゅうだった。Sounds like quite the doting parent. あ,あ、だから弟がガムシャラに仕事を頑張っていたのは何か理由があるんじゃないかと思ってね。A reason. 私はサチの誕生日の日に母親のポケットに入っていた工場の鍵にその答えがあるんじゃないかと思っているんだ。Are you, and you're saying Sashi doesn't. Ah. Ryoshin got Nanika or Kangai de Takotomo. Kagino Kotomo Shiranai Daro. Oh. Anokoa. Jibunga Iko Nistaina Kata Sede. Anojiko Kotte Shimata to Moikon de Tene. Jiko no Jokugo. Ryoshin no Hanasio Statake de Hakidas de Shima Kure. Sumi no Ishiki or Kanji de Ta. Sore de Sejin Kano Sensei to Mosoda Ste. でもあの手紙を書けるようになった今ならちゃんと過去と向き合うことができるんじゃないかと思ってね。And therefore you send me this key. ああ。今のサチのことを一番理解しているカザミ君がその必要があると判断したならその鍵を使ってほしい。Well, we have to. I have to know what's in there. Well, I think Sashi has to know what's in there more than anyone. Are you really comfortable leaving something this important to my judgment? これは既婚者の勘だが、サチはカザミ君のことをとても信頼している。そのことがあの手紙からは伝わってきた。だからこそ、その判断ができるのは君しかいないと思ったんだよ。カザミ君も急にこんな話を聞かされて困惑しているか
Yes, and thank you, sir. As the call comes to an end, I give a pointless little bow of the head to Sachi's uncle. Can't help but offer a little respect to a man who shows such sincere trust in a youngster he's never even met. Most likely, Sachi and her parents had their signals crossed, and everything should have been cleared up that very day. I vaguely suspected something of the sort, but Kamini Akihira's story has left me pretty firmly convinced. From the sounds of things, there's a decent chance that Workshop holds the answer that will unravel Sachi's painful misunderstanding. Assuming that these nightmares are connected to our sense of guilt about the past, I'll almost certainly need to take my chances and make use of this key. That said... Right now, I don't think Sachi could accept what she'd find there. Why not? My dreams are always the same, but not today. Today I dreamed of a girl in a small dim room, weeping and wailing. When I squinted my eyes against the darkness, I realized that the girl carried on the floor was Sachi. Sachi, but not the Sachi I know. Her legs were locked in thick chains, binding her to a massive ball of iron. She couldn't stand. Couldn't even drag herself along the rough floor. Even so, she struggled and squirmed, desperately trying to escape the heavy fetters biting into her flesh. But no matter how hard she tried, the cold iron wouldn't yield. Every twist and turn only brought more anguish. In the end, she stopped trying. Sachi was sealed in that gloomy prison with no chance of escape. And I was powerless to help her. I could only watch her, exhausted and hopeless, slowly wasting away. Oddly enough, I'm freed from that despairing nightmare by the same thing that announced its arrival. The sound of Sachi screaming. <coughs> the ear-splitting shriek jolts me awake, adrenaline coursing through my veins. <coughs> Twisting to my side, I immediately understand that the final scream was all too real. Sachi's curled up in a tight ball under the blanket, clutching at her arms as if to embrace herself. Her clenched teeth audibly chatter against each other. Hold on. This is... It doesn't take long for me to realize the abnormality of the situation. Sachi admitted that she'd been having nightmares lately, and I knew they were leaving her dispirited and exhausted. As of yesterday, the situation didn't seem like an outright emergency, but these symptoms are all too clearly something else entirely. She's experiencing pain and terror well beyond what a mere bad dream can offer. Sachi's eyes are wide open, tears streaming relentlessly down her cheeks, a contorted grimace frozen on her face. It's the expression of a human being forcibly shown a gruesome memory they'd like nothing more than to forget. Even as these alarming thoughts run through my head, Sachi continues to grind out apologies like a broken wind-up toy. Damn! I don't know exactly what she's seen right now or what triggered her to suddenly enter the state. But whatever the answer to those questions may be, I cannot allow this to continue even a second longer. Seizing on that one firm conviction, I lift Sachi's body up off the bed. Hey Sachi, wake up! I shout her name at point blank range, to no effect. She continues to mutter deliriously, staring right through me. Sachi, snap out of it, Sachi! <laughs> Even when I shake her by the shoulder almost too vigorously, the light doesn't return to her clouded eyes. God damn it! What do I do? How do I make her hear my voice? In the end, only one thing comes to mind. Wrapping my arms around Sashi, I envelop her in a gentle hug. It's alright. It's alright. Keeping my voice as calm as possible, I whisper reassuring words in her ear. Just like my master used to do for me. Using the simple warmth of my body, more real than words can ever be, I speak directly to Sashi's heart. In time, Sachi's previously frantic breathing begins to slow, 
and the violent trembling of her body gradually subsides. Finally regaining her consciousness, Sachi looks up at me with the eyes of a disoriented child. Are you alright, Sachi? You were having a nightmare until just a second ago. A pretty terrible one. That dream. When I try to prod the conversation forward, Sachi avoids the subject with a forced attempt at humor. Hold it, Sachi. I reach out and catch Sachi's arm as she tries to flee. What's torching you like this? The girl's doing her best to put up a tough front, but she's still too visibly shaken for it to be halfway convincing. That's a lie. The way you were screaming just now? That wasn't just a bad dream. I'm thinking it was a PTSD attack. Are you going to tell me I'm wrong? Mumbling resigned words in a wry tone of voice, Sachi turns back to face me and slowly lowers herself to a sitting position on my bed. In other words, I was on the money. Yes. I see. This is one of those times where being right isn't particularly pleasant. You know, I'd been so damn pleased with myself for saving Sachi, self-centered as it may be. This feels like some cosmic slap to the face. Like someone's telling me, you haven't saved anyone yet. There's a sharp, bitter stab of pain somewhere deep in my chest. Sorry. No, you don't need to apologize for that. I understand that she couldn't bring herself to volunteer the truth out of concern for me. To criticize her for that, you'd have to be an oblivious asshole or a genuine sadist. But I do want to know what's making you suffer like this. Stopping a mid-sentence, Sachi lightly bites her lower lip. From the expression on her face, just thinking about it must be enough to send some painful images flashing through her head. I know what they wrote on the reports, at least. Not much else. For minor red, a drunk driver ran a red light on the road outside the park where the two of us used to play, hitting your parents at full speed. Survived, but fell into a persistent vegetative state. She's still hospitalized to this day. Are you telling me you've been reliving that precise moment you've witnessed that accident over and over? So, ゴムが焼ける嫌な匂いもいつまでもアイドリングを続けるトラックのエンジン音も鮮明に感じられますからでも私が本当に怖いのはたった一つの言葉なんですはい word トラックに跳ねられた直後
お母さんはこう言ったんです「幸どうして?」ってそれは私にとってとてもショックな言葉でしたどうして今日はお家にいてくれなかったのどうしてもっといい子でいてくれなかったの私たちがこんな目にあったのは全部あなたのせいなのよそう言われているような気がしてだから私が病院のベッドで目を覚ました後お母さんが助かったと聞かされて最初に怖いって思ってしまったんです本当ならよかったってそう思うはずなのにもしお母さんが目を覚ましたらその口から私を憎むような言葉が出るんじゃないかってそれが怖くて退院した後もずっとお見舞いにすら行けなくてお父さんやお母さんから恨まれないような子に少しでもいい子にならなくちゃってそう思って。You know, I don't think Saji's ever shared these feelings with anyone else. In parallel to this cascade of raw, honest emotion, a constant stream of tears flows down her cheeks. That's enough. As words finally fail her, I embrace her trembling body. I'm sorry for making you talk about something you didn't want to remember. A little after the sun begins to peak above the horizon, Sashi lifts her face from my chest and smiles at me. You're not lying this time, are you? Alright. Determining that her smile isn't artificially plastered on her face, I slowly release Sashi's body. This <laughs> blatant attempt at flattery isn't going to earn you any head, Patty. Is that a fact? <laughs> Find the warmth of the person you love is a comfortable, calming thing. Enough to make you want to forget about all the rest. That said, I can't just let the discussion from before drop. I hesitate awkwardly, unsure how to proceed. But after a moment of silence, Sachi resolves my dilemma by speaking first. Punishment? Punishment? <laughs> ファクシュアルはい。そして今日はサチの誕生日だからみんなでお祝いしようと私はその言葉に驚きましたどうして急に2人が優しくなったんだろうでもすぐにそれが現実だということに気づきましたそしたら急に腹立たしくなってきたんです今までどんなに私が頑張っても振り向いてくれなかったのにそれなのに
誕生日の日だけ優しくするなんてそんなの都合が良すぎるそう思った私はすぐに家を飛び出しましたそして私はゆうくんとの待ち合わせ場所だった公園に向かい夕方になっても家に戻らない私を心配して探しに来たお父さんとお母さんは I see That explains how Sachi convinced herself that the accident was her fault. だから、私がどんなに後悔しても、どれだけいい子でいようとしても、あの日に事故が起こったという事実は消えません。そしてそれは、どうしようもないくらいに子供だった自分のせい。あの日の事故は、私が二人の言うことを聞いていれば、起こることのないものだったんです。だからきっとその原因を作った私のことをお父さんとお母さんは恨んでいるそう思っている限り私はあの日の夢を見続けるんだと思います From the sound of things she's still blaming herself even now the tone of her voice is almost resigned as if accepting her responsibility but that doesn't mean she's come to terms with what happened she simply is despaired over finding every Ever finding forgiveness. The proof is written on her face. Even as Sachi speaks calmly of the past, her expression is filled with a bitter regret. Alright. I understand where this is coming from. But there's still one thing I don't get. Up until just recently, I'm pretty sure you weren't having daily nightmares, let alone traumatic flashbacks. I mean, what happened? I mean, do you have any idea why they've gotten so bad? <laughs> 今の私が幸せを感じているからなんだと思います私がフラッシュバックに悩まされていたのは事故の直後がほとんどでいい子でいようと決めた後はフラッシュバックも悪夢を見る回数も徐々に減ってきていたんですでもこの学園でユウくんと再会してから自分の間違いに気づいて大切な人と一緒にいられるという幸せな時間を実感するようになってからまたあの日の夢を見るようになっただとしたらお父さんとお母さんが私のことを怒っているのかもしれません In other words, you're saying, your parents don't want you to be happy? もちろんこの考えは私の勝手な思い込みかもしれませんでも自分たちはこんなに苦しんでいるのにどうしてお前だけが笑っているんだ自分のわがままで家族の幸せを壊した張本人が幸せになっていいのかあの日のことを忘れるなそう言われているような気がするんです All right. I understand. I committed the sin of disobedience. My selfishness led directly to that accident. Of course, my parents would resent my happiness. Her father is dead. Her mother is still asleep in a hospital bed, and they can neither confirm nor deny that belief, let alone offer Sachi their forgiveness. With no possibility of resolution, your sense of sin swells grotesquely inside you like an ugly black tumor. I really do understand. The circumstances were very different, but. I carry similar feelings about the deaths of my own parents. Unless you know a way to turn back time, the debts you owe the dead can never truly be repaid. They can never accept your apologies or excuses. Sachi too has realized that harsh truth. Desperate to escape the torture of her flashbacks, she's reduced herself to a shell of a human being. Numbing her own feelings, she overwrote her identity with that of the good girl. And it worked. Nightmares left her alone. But thanks to my meddling, Sachi's returned to normality. And once again, she's defenseless against her dreams. It makes sense. There are two specific elements that contribute to these awful nightmares. First, Sachi never had the chance to hear her parents' explanation for their cold behavior. And second, she continues to believe on some half rational level. That the accident was her fault. 
Her guilt and fear of her parents' hatred feed off of her own happiness. In other words, if she wants to stop seeing these nightmares, she has to stop being happy. Sachi seems to have half convinced herself that suffering like this is just the price she has to pay, but I'm not enough of a masochist to accept that. I'm not about to put up the girl I love being miserable. No, forget not miserable. If at all possible, I want her to be the happiest person in the damn world. I think that's only natural. Precisely because I carry a burden similar to hers. I might be able to teach her a thing or two. Our burdens may be similar, but we're carrying them very differently. There's no reason to let your sin chain you to the ground. There's no need to lock yourself up in a dark room forever. It doesn't do anyone any damn good. And most of all, if I'm not mistaken, Sachi has an obligation to become happier than anyone else. Sachi, are you really alright with that? <laughs> are you really satisfied with this? Tortured by nightmares, living every day in terror of your own mother's words. <laughs> Cut off guard by my challenge to the status quo, Sachi casts her eyes down in bewilderment. She can't find the words, but the answer is written on her face. Of course, I don't want to see the nightmares, but there's nothing I can do. Personally, I don't think there's any reason you need to be tied down by the past any longer. That's right. Keeping that in mind, I'm going to tell you a way to get rid of those nightmares that you're giving you so much trouble. What you do with that knowledge is up to you. What, you don't believe what I'm telling you? I guess it might be hard for you to believe, having lived with that guilt for so long. That said, I really don't think you need to drag it around anymore. And I'm not lying about knowing a way out, I'm really not. That's right. There's only one thing for you to do about these nightmares. Kill the source. <laughs>